President Trump, as we just know, just launched a Twitter attack yesterday on a fifth House member of color after a Fox and Friends segment featuring a local Republican who took video of some garbage strewn abandoned row houses in Cummings Baltimore area district. Congressman Cummings it represents the most dangerous district in America. Trump called the oversight chairman a brutal bully, called his Maryland district a disgusting rat and rodent infested mess and asked without evidence whether federal aid there is being stolen. Quote, investigate this corrupt mess immediately. Joining us now from Los Angeles, Leslie Marshall, radio talk show host and Fox News contributor. And Leslie, um, Elijah Cummings responded that he fed his constituents every day. Uh, the president, I'm sure, same question I just asked Sean Spicer, knew that the media would say he's again targeting a minority lawmaker. Uh, why do you think he wants that? Do you think he wants this fight despite what he knows will be the racially charged criticism? I don't think he thinks before he talks. I, I really don't. I think he just lets it rip. And I think later either the ratings go up for him as approval ratings um, or apologies are made. And I think there are people behind the scenes in his administration, you know, who are cringing. Uh, the reality here is that whenever he uses the term infestation, when you look at all the times he has used the word infestation, it does refer either uh, to a country, a uh, district, a state or an individual that is under the umbrella of a minority, whether it's a, a brown person, a black person, African American, uh, Mexican American, Hispanic, Latino, uh, that is the fact. And no. therefore, when people start to say, uh, you know, this is racist, this is one of the reasons why. Now, Baltimore has a lot of problems, like a lot of inner cities, uh, although that's not the entire district. This also includes a suburban county for Elijah Cummings. Uh, do you think that video footage uh, that aired on Fox was enough to justify uh, the, the tone of the president's attack? Absolutely not, because when you look at the facts, I mean, the 53% uh, of Congressman Cummings' district is African-American. They are the second most educated African-American district in the United States. They are also the second highest income earners among African-Americans uh, in the United States. I don't consider Johns Hopkins University, Johns Hopkins Hospital, the University of Maryland, or headquarters for the NAACP rat or rodent infested organizations. All so right. no, I think that's very unfair. If you show a picture here in LA, and I know you know LA really well, um, if you show a picture of Skid Row, that's not Beverly Hills not and the entire all the other area, areas in between. Let me show you how, and let me show the audience how Victor Blackwell, a CNN weekend news anchor, handled the story. The president says about Congressman Cummings district, that no human would want to live there. You know who did, Mr. President? I did. Now, I understand why Blackwell is emotional as a Baltimore native. He's being hailed as a hero by the media, but I got to ask this question. He is a news anchor, and he accused the president of targeting black and brown people. Whether you agree with that or not, is that the role of a news anchor? You're not supposed to become the news, and you're supposed to report the news. But I do think sometimes there is a mountain uh, to die on. And I think this was his mountain to die on. Look, I'm a white woman. I certainly don't know what it's like to walk in the skin of an individual um, such as Victor, who is an African-American male, and all too often to have uh, words like this hurled at them uh, and their community. I don't know that pain. And I think the pain overcame uh, the title. And I don't think it takes away from his ability to be a journalist and have journalistic integri integrity going forward. Okay. Uh, and I, I, just, I understand. I, just think... I understand. I thought it was touching. I thought it was. Okay. I thought it was real. All I right. It was real. I'm not disputing that. I think if a Fox News anchor had mounted an emotional attack on Nancy Pelosi, there'd be a lot of media criticism. By the way, new Fox News poll says that uh, Trump's tweets about the four congresswomen uh, crossed the line 63 percent. 27 percent said is an acceptable political attack. Let me turn you briefly to the Mueller hearings. Now, in the wake of the hearings, Jerry Nadler, uh, the judiciary chairman, says he's conducting an impeachment inquiry in effect by asking for Mueller's grand jury material. And this is a way of getting around Nancy Pelosi, does not want an impeachment inquiry. Um, I see zero media criticism of this maneuver by Nadler, maybe because much of the media agree with the maneuver. 
<laughs> I don't know if they agree with him. I don't know if they're just uh, tired of it and they just want it to play out. Or it's kind of expected, isn't it? It's, it's a bit predictable. But at the end of the day, regardless uh, of what comes forth, Speaker Pelosi has been very, very clear. She said she has to have ironclad evidence to go forward with impeachment, and she needs bipartisan support. And even Congressman Schiff has said, look, even if we vote to impeach, it's dead on arrival in the Senate. Uh, there's an acquittal, and Democrats know all too well what happened in the Clinton administration. Right. His ratings went up. He was president, and it was Newt Gingrich, speaker, who resigned. And at the time, Republicans lost seats in both the House gotta, and the Senate. Got to go. I think you're being a little generous. I think the media would love to see an impeachment investigation. Great story, among other things. And the feelings about Donald Trump, I think, in many quarters, well known. Leslie Marshall, great to have you back. Good to see you. Take the rest of the day off. Thank you. Good to be here.